This one um, is going to be a critique on just basic forms from somebody on Reddit. And um, I would invite you to uh, listen with a pen, pull out a sketchbook, and uh, let's get to it. This is what I like to see from a beginner. Um, just practicing basic stuff. You know, I think it's important when you start out to um, experience good basic ex basics and the success that comes with good basics. So, um, let me do a little test here of my pen tool and we'll get going. So this is just some box form exercises. And um, there's a couple rules for boxes that I'm gonna pull um, this thing out for. So one of them is that uh, it goes back to basic shapes, right? Um, and ironically, the box form goes back to the triangle. Um, because what's happening when you, when you take a box, which is just a little rec rectangle uh, turned into perspective, when you see two sides of the box, you have a vertical. And uh, basically, that goes down and makes a triangle. And then on the other side, it makes a triangle as well. So all this is is triangular um, geometry, basically. And then at some point, where however wide and uh, the box is, you cut them off with a couple more verticals, and you see two sides of the box. Um, you know, we can separate that with a little value as well. We can bump up line weight on the front, and bump up line weight on the bottom, so that it kind of binds the edge. When you see uh, three sides of the box, right? So we've got one, two. When you see the third side of the box you double the number of triangles you need. So you have your front vertical, and you're going to see the top, so your triangle is going to go up above that vertical. You're going to have another one up here that meets hopefully on the same level, so this may need some adjustment, which is totally fine. And I'm erasing into the background, which is a Photoshop no-no, <laughs> and totally careless of me. So. I can uh, I'll just pick the background color average and erase with that. Now I'll go into a proper layer and do this correctly. Anyway, so we've got two triangles, right? So we're taking this side right here and we're running it over to this side, right? So this is side one, and then we're taking this side and running it over here. So this is side two. And then we're going to add side 3 on top. So what you can do from here is add a vertical here, add a vertical here, and then we're going to complete the triangles by going to the same point up here and up here. And so now we see side 3. Okay, And we've gone from, you know, two triangles connected on this vertical to four triangles, right? Because we have a triangle here, we have a triangle here, we have a triangle that meets up there, and then we have a triangle that actually, you know, borrows from and crosses and meets out here. So that's how I think of it, right? That we're, that we're stacking up multiple triangles to do this. As you get better, um, and, you will get, and you will get better at this, the sort of emphasis of this, um, this stuff changes, and you only need to keep in mind that when you draw some draw lines back from the front corner of the box that they need to converge and you don't necessarily have to draw everything right so when you draw this three-sided box you just think converge 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 vertical vertical right and then as you get more advanced with this things get simpler and simpler. The other quick tip here is that you need to actually close the shapes off and make sure you decide where everything meets. I'm very bad sometimes about not closing the shapes and making sure that they're shut off. The advantage to closing shapes is when you work digitally you can take the bucket tool and very quickly like throw in value into there when you're sketching um, you know without like lassoing or doing any complicated selection. So that's one advantage to that. Now let's look, take a look at what um, 
you've actually done here. And uh, I think this is a very good, very good beginning. So we need to refine it, right? So here, let's take this box, working on the front corner, and let's take this line as the line that we want to es to establish this box based on. Um, I think that's totally fine, right? We need to make sure that this is going back at a triangle. So what we need to do is maybe slightly adjust this up a little bit, right? Just be sure that we're thinking triangle here. So extending out really works very well for that. Here you've picked your intersection point, right? That's your ending. And then you might want to just swing this angle up a little bit. Um, instinct says that the when you're looking this far down on the box, that these angles um, will swing at a greater at a greater degree here. Um, you know, if you're looking at the box directly on, and you see this corner, you know, it's just going to be flat, um, and you won't even see this top, right? That's not even pictured. So as you go down further and further, looking down on it, your angle changes all the way towards 90 degrees, right? When you're looking straight down on it, so. Um, you'll develop that instinct over time through training. And then we gotta think, you know, we're going back and converging in terms of a triangle, and then we're going to keep our vertical in the same spot, right? Because we don't wanna make like these super drastic changes. And for me, I just redraw and mark over and draw out and like erase, and you know, I'll just go next to it and draw another one if I'm on paper. And then here we have to think we're going back because we're on the three-sided box, so we have to make sure that this is going back in a triangle, and that these are going to meet at some point. And then we have to remember that these two are going back at a triangle. They have to meet at some point, and they have to meet this guy, right? And they should meet at about the same height here as these guys. So your new box is going to be here. And then when you get into value, all you have to do is think, well, I need three different values. Um, to sort of differentiate. You can leave the top white. Um, you can take a dark value, throw it in there, and a medium value, throw it in there, and you basically have your box form as you need it, right? Um, so if we zoom out, we can check, right? So that should feel better than that, right? Um, and if you're working digitally, which it looks like you are, I recommend working in layers too. Here's another um, way that I, I begin these things. Um, when you're working on a box like this one, when you're doing these cutouts, um, I'm gonna turn this layer off so it doesn't clutter. Um, I like to get a, um, like a, a 10 to 20% gray for my sketches. And I'll go in there like this. And that's how I'll do my sketches. And I'll either do it opaque or pick a black and turn the opacity down. It just depends on the mood that I'm in that day. And so what I'm looking for is the same concepts that I did at the um, with the other box is I'm just looking for a convergence, right? So I'm establishing it off this and this and this. And the nice thing about drawing with uh, this 10% thing is that um, it's very light, or I guess in this case it's closer to 15%. Um, and I can draw right on top of it and not really worry about it and it, it will kind of like disappear into the into the fold as it were. Now if you wanted to subdivide this thing exactly in the middle you can use the X method subdivision and this is going to find the exact center point in both directions. So it'll find a center point here and it'll find a center point here and then this just has to converge to the same triangle point over here as this. So when you have that, then you know that you can converge over here, splitting the difference, and that if you bring this over, you'll be able to converge. And then you can think of converging with this triangle as well, right? All the triangles over there. So here, I've laid that out. Now, I can simply switch to my black or another color and I can begin picking the lines that I want exactly, right? And um, 
if you're being very careful, like I'm not being, you would create a new layer for this so that then you could just delete the old stuff and then it would be gone and you wouldn't have to worry about it. So these might seem like very subtle changes, but they're critical changes that should help you develop these things a little bit better. And um, one of the trouble that people have, I think, is seeing the applicability of these things, right? Um, you know, this basically is the start of stairs. So if you're doing architectural drawings, right, like if you're doing concept art, you're going to draw architecture. Um, there's just no real way around it. So you might as well figure this stuff out early on. Um, you know, we, you can also take like a, um, I like flat brushes that, um, you know, you turn the opacity off and they just sort of go. Um, just found this one today. So like, I like to think of just taking like a 50% and saying like, you know, where's my light source from and uh, run with it. So let's say I've got a light source like kind of coming from the left and uh, I'm going to put light on this top side and this side right here. That means that these sides are going to go into shadow. So what I'm going to do is take this 50% and like run it real opaque with the brush. and run this into shadow and I'm going to do the same thing here right now I think I'm going to leave the shadow off of this stair first while I determine where the overall box form shadow is so if I'm getting light from the left I'm probably going to get a uh, like a flicker of light right here right um, and on the ground I'm going to get a shadow that runs down. Um, if I run it like just perfectly straight like that, it'll be kind of boring. So maybe I want to like run it up a little bit, you know, where the shadow kind of goes, um, goes like back in space kind of. And so I'm like kind of in a front lit situation. Then I can figure out kind of imagine that the back corner of the box is right there. So I need to like run that out from there. And then, so my shadow from the box is going to be on the ground over here. And I'm just doing this as like a placeholder. I'm going to go back and touch this up later. So if I'm going back there, then I have a little mini box to shadow from, and I'm going to go at that same angle there, right? So I'm going to get a cast shadow on the stairs here. Um, that cast shadow is likely going to be darker, so I need to like run in on the stairs, probably reduce my brush size significantly. throw down my cast shadow. And I'm choosing kind of like a raking light angle. Um, you know, sometimes the light would do something more like this, where it casts a shadow like that. But I'm choosing like a steeper angle, um, because why not? And then, you know, my ground shadow is going to also be very dark. So I need to run in here with like this dark, maybe even darker and just like go to ground with it. And I'm paying attention to this shape, right? So when I get around here, I need to think of like, well, if I'm casting a shadow on the ground, like I'm going to get the shadow of the stairs somewhere, right? And it's going to do something like that. There's going to be like a little, a little cutout for the stairs. So I can play around with like, you know, what that looks like. Maybe it's more like that, something. Or maybe it's more like this and there's just like this, you know, fleck of the stair coming out. Maybe I need to like cut it a little bit and just work on that shadow shape, right? Then I need to, I don't have a differentiation on this side versus this side, so I need to like pick that, right? The least amount of work is going to be changing this side, because if I change this side, I also have to change this little fleck there. So um, what I'll do is I'll just run in like to a 30% gray and uh, cover that over, right? And 
And this way, I have differentiated every single side of the box. And I've also created a neat cast shadow. And then if I need to, I can just like eye drop and uh, change the shapes and like just refine from there. You know, and this is just sketching, right? You know, this is just practice to like sketch with. You know, this corner sucks right here, so like I need to go in and just like, you know, make sure that's better, right? This corner kind of sucks too, so I need to go in and change that. If I change that, then I come out to the outer edge and fix that outer edge and then fix this corner here. So, you know, there we have it, uh, like an improvement on this on this guy, right? Um, and an extension, right? It's, it's going a little bit further in terms of value and, and everything. Um, you know, the, the next ninja tactic, right, is to go in with this stuff and then create um, value transitions within this, right? So I might take this particular tone and get a, um, a soft round uh, brush, uh, make it sort of big, um, make it a little bit darker, and then as I get down to the bottom, create a slight value transition. The slight value transition is, is like the idea that this, the light is hitting it at the top um, closer. And then here, I might take this dark and this might reflect some dark onto here because there's like no reflected light and then I might take some of this light tone and work it up here where it might get a little reflected light there same thing here I might get a little reflected light here not as bright as what's on the bottom stair and then I might get a little bit of a darker re uh, reflection here maybe the stairs are shiny I don't know and then up here, right, where it's like pure white, I can just take a little bit of this 10 to 20% tone and run that there. And so now, you know, I take my, then I take my dark tone, right, you know, the not quite dark tone, and then I can soften the shadow edge and transition the shadow too um, as I go away from where I'm getting light. So when I zoom out now, I can check myself and say, well, now I'm getting these interesting value transitions in there, and that's kind of helping everything, right? And so those value transitions take up very little space in terms of like mental capacity, and I'm just stacking all these changes on top of each other, right? So, um, you know, the same sort of rules are gonna apply for the other cutout, right? And then, um, you know, real quick, we can just like take a look at, at um, this guy right here. Um, and see what we might do with this box. So here, what's kind of cool about this is like, you're loosening up, I think, with it. I like that, you know, this, you can do a box with like a little bit of an S-curve to it. Um, I think that's fun. So, but if you're gonna do that, you know, just own the S-curve and make sure it's like kind of elegant. You have to draw it a few times to get there. And then you can echo the S-curve around, right? Um, then, you can run out with your straight line. So this one's probably good, and this angle is probably good here. So now we just have to make sure that we converge. So this is kind of going off the wrong direction, right? So we need to go and cut upwards there instead. Um, and then same thing here. Like this would go off and diverge and go off on its own way, and we don't want that. So we want to go from this corner upward to where we're going to converge. Now the, the tip here is this angle right here, if this angle goes past a 90 degree angle, like it gets to this sort of angle where it's real narrow, you're entering distortion territory, which is fine to do, um, but know that this is sort of your limit if you don't want a distorted image. Then from the back here, we're doing the same thing. We need to converge back here and we need to converge back here. So it's gonna change the location of your back corner, right? And you can do, do these curves too, it's kind of fun, right? then you can actually take some extra line weight on this front to bring that forward. And you can take the line weight and run it thinner as you go from front to back on these. Then you can make pretty heavy line weight on the bottom. Um, and that'll kind of like imitate the shadow that you would see. Um, 
So that's a little bit of a, a fix there, right? Um, let me add a new layer and then I'll bucket in sort of a background ground tone. So yeah, that's our new kind of box based on that, uh, that fix. Um, so now we have an interesting situation because um, what, you're, what you've done here is you've wanted to, to create this box where you're mixing a one point and two point perspective box. Um, and I love the idea. Um, going back here, what, what you're going to do to simplify this to make it like understandable is take out the box part. And what you're going to do is you're going to create your um, two point perspective plane, right? And like me, draw it crappily and then fix it. <laughs> um, and then what you're going to do is figure out um, what kind of one point perspective plane can fit on this and actually work. So here I've got my two point perspective plane. I've checked for for convergence. So these are going to eventually come do a triangle. Then I'm going to write, I'm going to draw in my, my horizontal here and my horizontal here. And I don't need to worry about the triangles, right? And then I just need to think, well, so approximately if I extend these out, like my triangles are going to like end somewhere up here, right? So I might need to actually draw in a perspective thing and try to reconcile this by estimate. So this is pretty close, right? To stack these on top of each other, right? If I do this, then um, I can actually build a box off of that. And I can build a box up from here, right? Going back in this one point perspective direction. This gets messy when you draw through the forms like this, um, which is why you use layers like I didn't. Um, or if you do this with a pencil, you can erase. The other option is to use a second color of uh, colored pencil. Um, you can use a 10% cool gray alcohol marker and draw on top of it with pen or pencil, and it's going to work. So, what is happening here is it looks like, th it feels like this is going back in perspective, right? And this is kind of like a really good one point perspective box, right? But then it feels like the box under it is tilted at a different angle, right? So it'd be like I'm setting a box on a curved surface, but I'm not like, or tilted surface and, and they're not inhabiting the same sort of space. So, um, and I'm sure that, that when you look at it, to, to you it feels like a little bit uncomfortable, right? And uh, we can figure out why. So we might want to move this up. We can take our angles and run them here, okay? And then we want to make sure that these are going to converge. So if you look at the original, this line and this line aren't going to converge. They're not going to come back in that triangle. So what we want to do is be sure that when we cut off the box over here, right, that we're going to get to converge everything, right? Now, even if this box is like, if you draw it out wireframe style and it's hanging over on the back, that's fine, right? This is inhabiting a more realistic space by um, making sure that this plane right here and this plane reconcile. So I'll color code that. Um, basically what we're trying to do is get this bit and that is why you close your shapes in. Let me draw all of this on a new layer with an actual brush. Um, here, we'll just do this. We'll just draw it on. We'll draw the color code on a new layer. So we're trying to reconcile this plane, right? Um, 
with this plane up here. If we can do that, we're in good shape. The rest of the verticals and, and vertical planes are kind of just, you know, they're not really part of the equation so much. You know, they're they're there to for as like a as like a sort of finishing bonus, right? But these are the planes that you need to that you need to worry about. Um, and you know, you might actually try some like plane rotation exercises where you go over here and just say, well, you know, if I'm if I'm looking at a plane like this, that feels like it's going back in space a certain way. So let me just like rotate that a little bit, do like a slight angle, and then see if I can, you know, look at it like that. And then so I notice that my back plane is over here and my front plane is over here. But then what if I make it steeper, you know, and change it more like that? Can I get these things to feel like they inhabit the same space, right? You know, what angles do I have to do? And then play with it, right? Run it around, like change it until you get something that that you like, right? So here, you know, I've swung this this around, right? But it still doesn't feel right. It still feels too extreme. So I just keep playing, you know, keep changing, keep trying to fix it, you know. Pull this over here, change this. So now my corner is moving. So now they inhabit more of the same space. And I wanted to kind of intentionally, you know, screw that up, right? Um, because this is kind of how I think, you know, I don't draw perfectly every time. Nobody does, you know. Um, and if they do, that's because they're just rehearsing the things they already know how to draw, you know. Like the coolest thing about this sort of methodology is that this is going to allow you to explore new new territory in, in your drawing and allow you to do things that you didn't know you could do because you're breaking it down into component shapes, right? So, um, you know, part of the conversation that and, and your question that you were having was, well, you know, where is this going? <laughs> you know, why am I drawing boxes, right? And so eventually you can do more complex stuff, right? Um, let's see here. Let me give you an example. So, um, Maybe this is a good example. No, this is a terrible example. This is a good example. So this is like some stuff that I was working on with one of my classes about drawing exteriors, right? And so here over in the corner, this is kind of like the, where the magic was happening. So like right here, if you look at all this stuff, this is the floor plan, right? And this is kind of a loose sketch of what that floor plan might look like translated. And you, what you notice is that it's, you know, five boxes. And we basically just drawn five boxes stacked on top of each other and differentiated the value. And then here, it's taking that overall house shape and just saying like, well, you know, these are the dark bits, and these are the light bits, and keeping it very simple, you know. Um, same thing here, like, you know, stacking on a roof on top of that. And then here, we're talking about window proportions and so on, right? So that's a that's like a potential for where it's going, right? Um, Let's see here. Yeah, like this was, um, you know, think about vehicles, right? If you're drawing vehicles, you know, you're going to need to do stuff like this over here, where um, you have your three sided box, and then to get the hood to work, you're going to have to add two more sides and then change the values of those sides, right? And then you're going to have to be able to take those boxes and curve them like you're doing down here, right? these are basic just box form constructions, right? Doing these kinds of exercises and, you know, taking a wedge and putting it on a box and then taking a box and rounding all of the edges um, and understanding how those corners work, right? These are um, important little things to, uh, to remember and uh, keep in mind that, that when you're practicing these stupid little boxes, that's where you're gonna end up. So, um, you know, it might sound like I'm just defending these stupid basic exercises, and I kind of am, because um, for me, practicing anything is practicing everything. So when I'm drawing a sphere, like I'm practicing, you know, what that sphere could turn into as well. 
that the better I get at box form drawing, the easier it's going to be for me to modify that box and draw vehicles, draw cars, draw mechanical things, like do designs uh, and, and products and, and things like that. Um, so if it seems like this is kind of a boring thing to you, you know, keep the end goal in mind and figure out a way to make it fun. Like if you can figure out how to make a box fun, then you are going to be able to make like a vacuum cleaner seem fun. You're going to be able to take, you know, a birdhouse and turn it into a character. Um, because at the core of all that are these just very basic forms. And uh, I would encourage you to practice them uh, with, you know, great diligence. Um, and if you like this video, please, um, you know, give this a follow, uh, share it to your friends, and, uh, and if you would like to guarantee yourself some feedback and uh, get more resources and assignments and everything, you can sign up on Patreon as well.